What's up YouTube? Welcome to today's tutorial on advanced sky replacement in Nuke. In this tutorial we will be building upon my last sky replacement tutorial and except this time we will be working with moving cameras and motion tracking. So we will be able to have a moving camera in the scene and set up a sky box. Now this first part of the tutorial we will be going over how to create a custom sky box. So let's get started. Now first you're going to want to look up some images on Google if you haven't taken your own. I'd recommend taking your own but because right now it's really cloudy and snowy I'm not able to take those here in Missouri. But the best alternative is to don't go to Google, I use Bing, and just type in sky. I just use sky. Images and uh, nope just sky. That's good. And uh, look up some photos. Now you want mo all, almost all of your photos to be of the same perspective. That is the overall goal and try to balance the colors and cloud them out too. So you want them to really match. Like these two photos right here and here are perfect. They go together and will probably merge together really really well. Actually they're on the same, uh, probably the same person took the two. But still. You're going to want to look for ones that, again, match the same perspective, same altitude, things like that. But, I don't have to do that right now because I already have ours prepared. So, if I open these and then I flip through them, you'll notice that they're varying in size and color. Because they're all taken from different websites, pretty much. So, this tour we will be going over how to stitch those together into a single uh, box I guess into a single material so uh, open up Photoshop which is my program of choice for this sort of thing you can I guess use nuke for all of this but Photoshop just seems a little better now this last cloud photo I won't be using I won't be stitching this in this is just for clouds here and there um, that I might need a little cloud transfusion but yeah, so go to File, New. I have my presets here from last time. I'm creating it 5,000. And then the thing is, it doesn't matter the width because you're going to be stitching them all together. But you're going to want to take the biggest image or your favorite image that you want to work with the height, that you want to keep the height. And then you're going to look down here. And the last one is the height. It's width by height. So you're going to take that number and you're going to put it in. And that is going to create a very long image. Like so. But that's not long enough so go to canvas size pixels let's change this to 10,000 now we're gonna shrink this down afterwards oops 10,000 not 1,000 we're gonna shrink this back down actually undo that and make sure you hit D before you do it now go image canvas size and change that to 10,000 and hit OK now I'll start dragging them in one by one. So drag in image one. And scale it up. Enter. And we're just dropping these in. You might even have to make it bigger. Uh, I think I ended up going with 20,000 last time I did this. Now when we put them side by side, you can really see the color difference. Actually, yeah, I'm going to go canvas size, pixels. 20, 1, 2, 3. And again, you can see how enormous this is, image is going to be. But you want it to be bigger so you can drop all the images in, in whole and then shrink it back down, trim it. Now you can see this image and this image match. So we might want to reorder those. So drag three over here. And then drag four close to two. And then uh, scale it up a little bit. And then 
our last image is number five, which as you can see is a ridiculously small image. And this is our sky box. As you can see, it does not look that good. But we're going to trim this down a little bit. So bottom right pixel color, which is the background. There we go. And now we are left with our images. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save this because I don't want to mess this up. Uh, go to skybox folder. And I'll name this sky text for sky texture. And now, the one thing that node compositing has over something like this is that you can edit anything. You don't have to worry about merging layers because you can always go back and edit the original. Now, you have to preserve the original in Photoshop, unfortunately. So, in case we ever need to rearrange these, right click, or shift click all of these, duplicate layers, hit OK, and now the original ones go layer, new, group from layers, and title this orig uh, whoops, originals. Okay. And now merge these. Actually, no, do not merge those. Delete these, go back to the originals, and now we're going to do color correction. You have to do that before you start painting. So go to image. Never mind. Go to image adjustments. Actually, you gotta rasterize these. So, shift click rasterize. Now, now click the first one, and go to image adjustments, hue and saturation. And now, mainly, what we're trying to do is we're trying to match the blue in the sky. So we are going to do that by. Maybe upping the saturation a little bit and then upping the lightness. You really got it's all about playing around with it. And that looks about good, so hit OK. And these two are pretty much color corrected together, so you don't really need to fix anything there. But then here, which is number three, yeah. Go to image, adjustments, brightness, or hue and saturation. And uh, it's, this is really tricky. I, I did all of these images before, so I kind of know what to do. But it's still pain. <laughs> I really did not enjoy this one image right here. It was not fun. Really, there's nothing you can do. That's all you can do. So, uh, yeah, you can just leave it like that. And then... Number five, we're gonna adjust this. Where's number four? Yeah, we don't need to do number four. Okay, and that's good enough uh, for now. Remember, this doesn't have to be perfect because this will be in the background. Um, it's not going to be the focus of anything. So what we're really going to want to do is we are going to want to take these. We are going to duplicate them. So duplicate layers, okay. We're going to merge them. And we are going to drag them above out of the group and uh, let's rename this something like paint because this is our paint layer and then there's a brush called the clone stamp which is like the best brush in Photoshop because it allows you to do anything and we're going to start painting now this is the tedious part where it really isn't fun because it's just a lot of clicking and then repainting and screwing up. But really you're just trying to get rid of that straight line. So just paint some more clouds in. Also a trick I've learned is if you just paint from the center of the cloud, it's gonna look like a brush no matter what you do. It's just gonna look like a brush stroke. So if you need an edge of the cloud, paint 
from an edge of a cloud. See, it blends in a million times better. So sometimes clouds can merge and you want to say which cloud would I rather keep or which cloud is larger. If it's just a little bit like this, you're going to want to erase it. So I'm just hitting uh, Alt, selecting the color, and then just, since the sky is pretty much the same color in this area, I'm just uh, going to paint this out really quick. And then I'm going to go back to the clone stamp. I'm going to paint in this cloud where the other one is because this cloud looks a bunch better. Now as you can see here, there's this gigantic seam that is going to be very, very hard to undo or get rid of because you've got this really big color gap. So go up here to the lasso, make sure it's the normal lasso, and just outline this little area where it would normally be darker. So just go like this, especially the dark blue area. Anyways, that's good enough. And then edit, or image, hue saturation. Um, you might want to make this a little darker blue. No, that doesn't work. You want that hue, uh, no, I didn't want to do that. Hue saturation. And you're going to bring the saturation up. And probably bring this down. Actually, before you do that, go to refine edge and feather it. You're going to want to feather it a decent amount. So that you can't, so that, you know, really blends in. So uh, that's a good, that's a good amount to feather it. And then, actually, no, I'm gonna hit Control U for now. So just make it darker until it matches. Like that, that's good. And now start painting again. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to crop this out really fast because this seam is going to be very hard to cover up and I'm going to go layer new uh, layer via copy not cut but copy and then drag this around like this so it sort of overlaps rotate it and now you're going to look and you're going to notice that is really bad so go to uh, select color range and then you're going to drop this color right here and then hit OK. It's going to select for a little bit and uh, redo that select color range because you want to you don't want it selecting that much of the inside so drop the range a lot. Yeah, try to minus this little area. Yes, that's what you want. You want to minus that area and then select it and hit, it'll select color range, delete. Delete, just delete it a few times until most of it's gone away. And now move it into place about there. And now you're going to want to use the eraser. Actually, don't use the eraser. Create a layer mask and then paint black. And uh, just mask it out a little bit. Especially up here because you got that little rough edge where you made the selection. Boom, blends in perfectly. Wow, that actually looks really, really good. And now, just uh, feather this out, blend it out a little bit. And now all that's left to do is merge it, 
merge layer. And now start painting together. So, uh, yeah, start painting the. And now it's not perfect, but that'll do. There's no really obvious seams there. But now here, this is where one of the big problems comes in, right here. You can see that big seam where we would have to totally duplicate the entire cloud. And because we're gonna have to duplicate the entire cloud, just uh, select it with the lasso because it's one of those And now layer, new, and pretty much I'm just going to do the same thing we did before. 